thank you so much for all your feedback on time management. I love reading your thoughts and comments. Some of them completely crack me up. And so we're going to dive into some of those today because I think there's so many people that are exactly like you going through what you're going through. And I know it's hard to connect with people because you feel like you're the only one going through it. But trust me when I say you are not alone, friend. One of the main comments we got was not even about yourselves. It was about how to manage time wasters. So whether that's a person in your family, one of your employees that is constantly saying they're going to do something and flaking out or coming to interrupt you, whatever the case may be, time wasters was a big one. Another thing that people really mentioned was needing tips on how to plan out their day. And I think these comments are so interesting interesting because on the surface, that seems very simple. Plan out your day. Everybody should plan out their day. But for a lot of people, that can be really tough. So we're going to talk about that as well today. Another one was feedback regarding my time cube or setting a timer. And so I think that's another important thing because that timer can really change the way that you do things and how you manage your time. Another thing too was determining when you're most productive. I know I've mentioned before that a couple of my team members love to work at night. It's just a better time for them. They're more productive versus, you know, working on my schedule. Now, of course, we're all over the world, so different time zones and things affect it, but for a lot of them, working at night is much better for them. And so I think it's important to determine, are you a morning person or an evening person? Because getting up earlier in the day might not be effective for you. Maybe doing more at night and then getting to sleep in is more effective. Now, I know for some people that might be hard because if you work a nine to five job here in the States, you absolutely have to get up at nine o'clock and be at work. There's no, oh, well, I'll come in at noon. Or is there? I think with everything that's happened over these past couple years, people are more open to talking about working from home. When's the right time for you to work? People are so much more open to it, especially if you're currently productive. You can actually have that conversation with your boss or the person that takes care of your job to see is it feasible for you to work when you're the most effective? Now, you've got to be careful when you start that conversation. You've got to do some research. You've got to be prepared when you go into that conversation in order for you to explain to the person why you think working at night versus the morning might be more effective. But I think it's awesome to give some thought to having that conversation because a couple years ago, it might not have even been an option. I think the most important thing when you're looking at planning your day, because this was a comment that we got quite a bit, was that you sit down and you look at your schedule. Now, maybe you're like, I don't even know where to start. You could easily print off an hourly schedule online if you have Microsoft templates, or you can just Google an image that's available as well. And you can start to line out in a perfect scenario, what time would you like to get up? What do you have to do that day? Do you have any doctor's appointment, dentist appointments? Does your family have any appointments that they need to be there? Are you required to be somewhere at a certain time? Fill those things in first, and then you can manage time around that. So let's say if you do have a commute, that's something you're gonna to wanna to work into it. And depending on the day, your commute time might be different. So you wanna make sure that you're taking that into account because nobody wants to be running late because that just creates a ton of extra stress. So by writing all the things down that you have to do in each day can really help you manage that time. Working in conjunction with your timer might help you get those tasks completed at a much faster rate than if you were just like, meh, I got all day, I'll get it done when I get to it. I really loved your stories about time wasters and the different people that may or may not realize that they're completely wasting your time, but how to manage them and help them move on. Now, if this time waster is one of your employees that is constantly asking you questions, I would refer you back to a couple episodes ago when we talked about creating that content library of every single step that you've delegated to that person. Because if they start to knock on your door and want to come in, all you have to say is, did you check the content library yet? A lot of those things can be minimized by having a place where people know where everything is kept. So if they have a question, they can get it answered right away. 
Now, if this is something that isn't in your content library, but you don't have time to talk about it now, you can simply ask that person to schedule a time. If you use an online scheduling link, you can have a very specific link that you use for these people. Hey, I've only got 15 minutes. Here's the time slots that are available. You'll need to schedule those questions in during that time. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, then that prevents that person from continuing to work. I agree but we have to start to find some way to manage all these interruptions so you can get your work done and also start to train these time wasters that you don't have time to be bothered every single day, every other hour with questions. You can tell them to make a list of those questions, come prepared to the meeting, that way you can get all their questions answered so that way they can move on with their day as well. Because there's many tasks and you don't want them saying, well, I could have moved on to that task, but I had to wait for my appointment with you. Encourage them to find other resources to get those questions answered so they're not waiting on you and ultimately wasting time. I think a really great tool to manage your day is those time tracking tools that we talked about a couple episodes back. Make sure that you are tracking your time because you will be able to see all those little pockets of time that are potentially wasted. Let's say you're trying to achieve a huge goal. You're studying for a test, a way to advance yourself in your business. You might not have two hours every single day, but you probably have 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Those small pockets of time when you could jump and Take some test questions, maybe get some definitions in. Whatever you need to do to propel that goal forward, you need to do. Because if you have a busy family, a busy spouse, you might not be able to carve that much time out in one big block. However, you also have to think too, because you might need to train yourself if you're taking a huge test, like I have done before, to sit in one spot for four or five hours can sometimes be very difficult. So you've got to balance that. You've got to make sure that you're getting the material in, but also that you're training yourself to actually sit for the test. I still believe that you are going to have more luck in getting those small pockets of time, getting everything that you need done versus those large chunks of time and saying to yourself, well, if I don't have a full two hours, then I'm just not going to do it. Because the reality is you probably are not going to have that huge chunk of time every day, but finding those small bits and pieces of time, you absolutely can find. That might just mean less Facebook, less TikTok, all these things that are distracting you, maybe it's a TV show. You've got to put that stuff on hold so you can get this goal done. I hope that you have enjoyed this series. We just have one more pillar left and I'm excited to share it with you because I think it's going to wrap everything together and help you understand how all these different pillars come together to equal the scale your small business process. I'm excited for you to tune in next week. Make sure that you listen into that episode because I would love to get your feedback on that one as well. The feedback over these last couple episodes has been amazing and I would love to keep it up. So if you have comments, questions, concerns, make sure you leave them below. And don't forget, you can train yourself to be more self-aware by tracking your time, be more focused by managing all those distractions that are coming at you every single day, be more prioritized in managing the order of the tasks that you do things in, and being intentional by keeping that to-do list up to date and working through it every single day. And don't forget, you can be more structured by time blocking your schedule. All these things together can really help in your overall time management. Make sure that you tune in next week for our very last pillar.